So I am back at the hotel from Card Stadium. Really cool shop, as you saw from the brief video footage. Really a lot there uh, on the baseball side, a ton of sealed wax, which I love behind the counter there. A lot of good prices too, but I wasn't really going for the value this time. And um, if you've checked out my Instagram, by the way, check me out. I am still fairly new on Instagram, but um, I've been buying a lot of Wander Franco Bowman Chrome stuff so um i am kind of in the prospect mood i guess you would say and uh julio rodriguez marco luciano this product's absolutely loaded now it is a retail configuration um so chances of getting an autograph are few and far between if we do get one it'll probably be a paper autograph or a green retail exclusive which would be still awesome to hit those are numbered to 99 especially if a great player but you know, let's not get crazy. Um, ideally, I mean, we'll hit some Wander, uh, Wander Franco base chromes, which could go up in value. Who knows? Um, right now, there are a couple prospect lists that have been published for 2020. I believe CBS and MLB.com have them already. Uh, but I believe there are more to come, Baseball America Prospectus, etc., that'll come out in mid to late January. And I believe Juan Franco will be number one on those lists. That's that's my hunch. Um, like he was number one on the first couple lists that came out already. So as you might say, there could be some more room for uh, him to go up, at least in the short term, guys. You know, Juan Franco might not be a guy that I'll sit on until he gets... Um, his debut, which could come, some are speculating as early as the second half, maybe August, September of 2020. Um, that would make him the same age as Juan Soto, I believe. He'd be 19 um, during his Major League debut if he does get called up at the second half of this year. But uh, I don't know. It's too much risk for me. You might say I'm already taking a huge risk by buying low-numbered autographed and refractor Juan Franco's. Um, given that he has no experience, I believe, above a ball. But um, I just think there's more to, more room to climb in the interim. Um, I'll take a chance on him at AA, at AAA, still putting up pretty solid numbers. He just has that very mature approach that you look for that we saw with Juan Soto, uh, one of the things that really made him stand out and accomplish the things that he did on the field in the majors. All right. So not the best setup this time, guys. I apologize for that. Don't really have a, a tripod, kind of working with a makeshift tripod here. Probably go through the base pretty quickly. Got a Beau Bichette. He's going to be coming out, I believe, what is it, February 3rd or 4th? 2020 Top Series 1. He's a top three rookie in that product with Gavin Lux and Jordan Alvarez. Um, speaking of Jordan Alvarez, I mentioned him in a speculation series video. The Astros, of course, implicated and proven guilty in the cheating scandal, which was one of the worst cheating scandals of all time. Um, as far as I know, 2019 wasn't really called in a question. It was mostly the 2017 season where they use the um, replay camera to communicate signs real time to hitters with or without runners on base. It didn't matter. They were getting them in the dugout. Um, so Jordan Alvarez, even if the, the Astros cheated similarly this year, which I don't think it was to that magnitude, maybe, you know, they were, you got a Joey Bart paper, 
uh, Luis Robert Chrome, not a first, but still pretty cool. I don't think it was to that magnitude this year. And um, Jordan Alvarez, he didn't have the same batting average at home, but he put up a 980 OPS with similar power at home. Um, so I, I, he wasn't cheating the minors either when he was also tearing it up. I find it hard to believe that Jordan Alvarez was helped much at all. Um, now, if we talk about the Red Sox, I think there's probably still more to come out, but I don't think the Astros cheated nearly as badly as um, the Astros did, even with the the common stitching being Alex Cora, being the potential mastermind like he was the actual mastermind in Houston. All right. guy's all right wait no i was gonna say is he the guy that passed away i think that was costello he was probably also in this product speaking of the cardinals they have been tied to nolan arenado rumors that would be really good for nolan arenado's hobby in theory if he was to move to a bigger market team paul goldschmidt effect C. Paul Goldschmidt, who moved from an NL West team that was lesser known, the D-backs, went to the Cardinals, and his hobby did go up. Um, but Nolan Arenado remains to be seen. Well, he historically got a Vlad in the back. Historically, he hasn't, from an offensive standpoint, he hasn't uh, performed the same way on the road as he has at home. Um, some of it, some of it, a little bit of it could be attributed to him being more comfortable at home, but a lot of it is undoubt, it, undoubtedly the Coors effect, um, which if you look at stats, advanced stats like war that are ballpark adjusted, you'll see that they, uh, they have given him quite the adjustment back down to earth from playing half his games at Coors Field. Um, it is what it is, guys. So who knows what he could do somewhere else. Um, home runs are going to go down. The RBIs are probably going to go down quite a bit. This is a guy with a career OPS on the road of probably close to 800, maybe in the low 700s, or the sorry, the high 700s, approaching 800. Who knows, guys? Who knows? But yeah, um, you can't you can't ignore that St. Louis's baseball market's quite a bit better than the Rockies. All right, got our first parallel card, I believe. That is a paper Ramon Laureano number to ninety nine. I will take it. Not his. I mean, it says a rookie card, but of course he's got a. Actually, he doesn't have a first Bowman, so it's a pretty sweet card. Um, just paper, but. He was also featured in my speculation series. Really looking for that wander though. Um, be nice to get at least one in here. Paid about 85 bucks for this. You can get these on eBay for cheaper, about 80. I think it's a pretty good price. All right, got a refractor of this jerk off. Just kidding, he's okay. I think I actually uh, pulled a green of his from a retail product too, which is too bad. I'd rather have it be somebody else, but then I a lowly astro. They're being being called the the asterisks and the trash throws and it's just there's a lot of teams. It's not just fans of the Yankees and Dodgers that are probably more affected by this than most. Whether you look at um, individual accolades or of course the World Series victory and the Red Sox World Series victory, but it's affected by Cora. But um, 
it's really it really le- leaves a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. Um, fans of any team, really. All right, here we got a Casey Mize. This one's a nice talent pipeline, number to ninety nine. Another green. We got a Jordan. That's good. So this is his first Bowman Chrome non-autograph card. He does have a 2018 Bowman Chrome auto. He did not have a base card in this set. So this card is actually pretty valuable. I don't know if that'll stay once he has more, you know, true rookies this year. The Topps Chrome, the Topps Heritage, of course, the Series 1. Seth Beer. It's a pretty good one, in my opinion. Have a Seth Beer already. He's not on the Astros anymore. He's on the D-backs. But yeah, I just I just feel like um, just not good for the game. It affects doesn't just affect two or three teams. It affects everybody. Everybody just because of you know the them winning the World Series a couple years in a row is just not cool. Ronald Acuna. Yes, that has to be him. I didn't know he had this card in here. Followed by Wander Franco. I'll take it. And I'll certainly take this too. So the way I see it, going back to cheating, or sign stealing, there's three different levels of sign stealing. There's the first kind, the, t- the kind that everybody does, the legal kind, where you're not using technology to your benefit and you're stealing signs from basically the base runner. Usually it's going to be the guy in second base, uh, guy in first with a wide lead. <laughs> Probably won't be able to see much from the catcher, but so it's usually going to be that guy in second base peering in and trying to communicate something to the um, the hitter, got a Luciano. This one's nice. Nice, very nice. Just a paper, but I like Luciano. I've got some of his stuff. So that's the first kind. Um, and that's not always going to be useful, really, to the hitter because signs often change up quite a bit. If the pitcher or catcher is a little wary or potentially paranoid that something's happened, they'll do a um, little meet and greet and change the signs, in some cases in the middle of an at-bat or an inning, and um, put that to an end. So the second type of sign stealing is what the Red Sox, I think, are being accused of for 2018. It's what the Yankees were accused of in the past. It's what the Red Sox were accused of in the past in the pre-Cora years. Um, These are not bad rookies. Um, And that is using technology like a replay room, but relaying information only when there's a runner on second base that can see that and um, communicating that with the the batters. Got a nice Pache, nice Eloy, how about that? The hits are coming in, guys. Um, So you wouldn't necessarily be giving a real-time advantage to the hitters unless there was a um, runner on second base. And then the third type is what the Astros were accused of. And and you know what? It's not just the Red Sox and possibly the Yankees um, that were or may have been guilty at number two. And by the way, that's something that only was illegal after the beginning of 2018 when an official memorandum came out. Um, And the Yankees had done it before it was illegal. So I don't want to lump the Yankees into the Red Sox. They they clearly, um, they're not on the same wavelength there because it wasn't illegal when they were doing it. Um, But the, the third type of cheating is relaying signs in real time using electronics to the the batters um at any any situation so the the runner wouldn't have to be on base um not it doesn't necessarily have to do with any base runners it doesn't have to do with first or third base coaches per se and um so the astros are doing of course with the banging on the dugouts and pretty much in any given circumstance during that season it appears that um, the Astros had the edge and I don't know if they even in the playoffs they could have done it I think in 2018 they made sure that there was no cheating of that such um, it took extra measures the, the umpires did but but yeah so Alex Cor, of course has been released of his duties something that I expected after seeing what happened to um, 
A.J. Hinch, and also given that based on all the interviews, it was determined that Alex Coro not only was involved, but he was the ringleader, the chief advocate, the mastermind. He underpinned the entire thing. Whereas A.J. Hinch kind of, you know, didn't agree with it. Um, with him, it was more negligence, right? He didn't do enough to stop it when he could have. Did a few things, but didn't go all the way. So, so yeah, I don't know who our manager is going to be next. I've heard some probably biased friends of mine um, su suggest that maybe Jason Veritek. I don't know if this, any of this is based on fact. I didn't really have conversations. Just These are just like um, two-word text messages, little trout there. But I guess we will see. We will see. This is the guy that passed away. Rest in peace, Ryan Costello. Not feeling too good about the Red Sox, though, to be honest. I think we tried to desperately trade Mookie Betts so we could offload David Price's contract at the same time. Um, but didn't work out. The positives of Mookie Betts, the contributions there for one year um, did not outweigh the negatives of taking on the David Price contract. Part of that is because, you know, there's no guarantee that Mookie Betts will resign. So I get it. I get it 100%. Um, so this is going to be a season that's already set to be a failure, I think, unfortunately, for the Red Sox. Um, I don't know if they spend money at this point. I don't really care. Um, if they want to spend some money on some short-term contracts and pick up some bullpen pieces to try to put out more of a passable squad, you know, that's, that's fine, I guess. Um, I don't know. We'll see. If they even do that. But any big contracts, I probably would not try to do. All right, we got an autograph here. Number to 99, green. Really cool at this. Mason Martin. It's a first. Um, this is good, guys. Don't know much about him. Let's see. How old is this bastard? Uh, born in 99. So that makes him uh, 20. He's 20. His numbers suck. 220 average, 386 slugging, 722 on base. 14 homers. That's okay. Um... Here you go. There's the resume there. Follows pro football. Cool. Good for him. Hopefully that works out for him. Maybe he can... Uh, I don't know, I'm not, I'll leave it at that. All right. A few more packs left. You know what? We hit an auto, guys, from retail. Doesn't always happen. Definitely beat the odds there. Now i got to find a way to uh, transport these things without damaging them when I go back to my home state. It's a one-day work trip for me. Oh, nice. We got the Wander, guys. Nice. And I got a purple right behind it. How about that? All right. So, you know what? Got some money back from this. Got some money back. Even though it's retail. Even though I paid hobby prices for retail. <laughs> um, did okay. This guy any good? Purple. Number to 250. Still got a few packs left, too. How about that? Got a little Pete Alonzo. Nice. It was it was a tough call. It was between this, 2018 Top Series 1, 2019 Top Series 2, 2014 Bowman Draft. They had 2018 Bowman Hobby. Um, geez, they had like three or four other products I was eyeing to. We got another green, guys. It can't be another autograph. Oh, that would have been sick. This is a green um, shimmer, sparkle, wave, Chris Paddock, number to 99. That is sick, guys. Now, this isn't a hot box, but this is uh, this is pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Glad I recorded this. Really wasn't going to. Haven't been doing a lot of uh, breaks on camera. Actually, I haven't been doing a lot of breaks at all. What I realized is that it's a lot less stressful when you're breaking less cards because there's... The organization, the sorting, the rush to sell, the hits.
for the products that are hot. It's just a lot of work after you break. It's not just the money you spend, it's all the crap you have to do afterwards. Nice, got another Jordan. Got the Christian Javier guy again. Dakota Hudson was pretty cool. DJ Peters, that's a good one. Although I think Drew Peters is the prospect you want to get. I think he's on the Phillies. Um, all right, that is it. All right, so I think I got most of the notables here. So for a quick recap, and uh, I believe I did almost as good, or if not a little bit better, than a regular hobby box, which sells for almost double um, what I pay for this 24-pack retail box. All right, so first for the paper, got a Freudus Nova, first Bowman. Wander, first Bowman, Marco, Luciano, Alonzo, Acuna, Vlad, Trout, Andrew Knezer first, Joey Bart, Jordan Alvarez. For the Chromes, we have Kirilov, Luis Robert. We got this ready for the show, Tristan McKenzie, as well as the top 100, Dakota Hudson, Travis Swaggerty, and then Eloy, and also Kirilov. Uh, first Bowman Chrome, Kirilov, Costello, rest in peace, Ryland Bannon, um, got these Rookie of the Year favorites, Luis Orias, Chance Adams. We got these Bowman Heritage, 30th anniversary, um, Miguel Amaya, Ronald Acuna, Bo Bichette. And then we got Jordan Alvarez, first Bowman non-autograph chrome card. We have one, two, three, four, five, six numbered cards, guys, in a retail box. Christian Javier, number to 499, first Bowman. We got a Chris Paddock, number to 99, green shimmer. We have a purple paper, Anthony Siegler, number to 250. We have a green rookie card stamped, not really a first Bowman. I don't think he had a first Bowman. Ramon Laureano, number to 99, paper green. We have another green, Casey Mize, Jake Rogers, Matt Hall, the notables, Casey Mize here. Um, pretty nice card. Talent Pipeline, number to 99. We've got a Wander Franco base. Um, have to look at this one a little bit more. But all the ones I had had surface scratches on it. And I think this one might be one of my better cards. Maybe I should have had some better lighting the entire time. Sorry, guys. It got kind of dark. And then highlighted by the Mason Martin. First Bowman, number 99, autograph green. Let me know what you guys think. Um, that is it for today's break. Awesome hobby shop. Card Stadium, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Check them out. Like, comment, subscribe. Filmington out.